there, folks. Say and TF years on the Ghost Riders here. Double actions in the Old West. Let's look into it. So, for those of you who are not gun enthusiasts, a single action requires the hammer to be drawn back before pulling the trigger for each shot. A double action allows for you to just squeeze the trigger. In 1851 England, Robert Adams patented the first double action revolver. After some later improvements by Lieutenant Beaumont, the revolver was used in the Crimean War and then in the American Civil War. Surely, my lord, that is enemy advancing. That is a signal for enemy advancing. Surely? Are you quite sure? The Savage 1861 Navy was an interesting one. It had a ring below the trigger which cocked the hammer. Although only 20,000 were produced, it wasn't very popular and post-war only 17 were bought by soldiers. Perhaps one or two of those headed west. You... you savage! Star revolvers were also used during the war between the states. Chambered in 44 and 36 calibers, the hammer couldn't be drawn back and used as a single action. Later the company produced single actions which were much more popular. <laughs> Oh, come on, Clint. Colt patented their answer to the double action platform with the model M1877. Over 166,000 were produced in various barrel lengths. Incidentally, the shorter barrel model was called the Shopkeeper Special. It was a smaller framed weapon than its single action brother, and it was available in three calibers. Those three guns had nicknames. The 32 caliber was Rainmaker, the 38 was Lightning, and the 41 was Thunderer. However, the action on these handguns was prone to spring breakage, and many found the reliability to be in question. Regardless, John Wesley Harden, Billy the Kid, and Doc Holliday were supposed to have carried these. In 1878, Colt came out with their Frontier model double action, which had a larger frame so it could fire the more powerful calibers. Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. In 1880, Smith & Wesson entered the double action game with their top break Model 2. It was available in 32 and 38 and manufactured until 1913. Incidentally, Smith & Wesson also came out with the first double action with an internal hammer in 1887, called the Safety Hammerless. The British Webley made a shorter barreled concealable self-cocker called the Bulldog, which was popular in the West. Apparently, one was carried by John Tunstall of Billy the Kid fame, and President Garfield was assassinated with one. Merwin and Hulbert, Hopkins and Allen, Forehand and Wadsworth, and Ivor Johnson all made double actions. Some were copies of Webley's Bulldog. Although there were plenty single actions floating around the West, it is nice to know that some of our old Westians were early adopters of the self-cocking mechanism. By the mid-20th century, the actions had all the bugs worked out, and these guns dominated the revolver market. But Ian, this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Pew, 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 pew. Pew. And we'll see you on down the trail. <laughs>